Hello and good morning, my friends. I'm Atul Kedia. I'm a fourth year undergraduate student at IIT Bombay. And I'm going to discuss some uh, quantum mechanics problems with you. So let's begin with the first problem. This is the problem we are encountering right now. Uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes to uh, attempt it, give it a thought, and then we'll uh, discuss how to go about with the solution. So just to make sure that you are uh, able to read the question, I'll just read it out aloud. Uh, show that the Bohr condition, Bohr's condition of quantization of angular momentum leads to the condition of formation of standing waves of electrons along the circumference of the Bohr model of hydrogen atom. So the Bohr's quantization condition comes from one of his postulates um, that the uh, energy difference between transitions of uh, electrons from one state to the other has to be an integral multiple of uh, h. Uh, so so let's go about with the problem. The, f the condition is that uh, the angular momentum is uh, has to be an integral multiple of the Planck's constant, the reduced Planck's constant. So uh, taking this beyond, uh, it'll be the uh, angular momentum for an atom, for an electron around an atom uh, at a radius, let's say this is a proton, uh, the, this is a nucle nucleus of the, at, uh, of the atom, and the electron is rotating, uh, is revolving at a distance of, let's say, around r uh, around the nucleus. So the angular momentum would be given by P into R. Uh, precisely speaking, it will be R cross P. But then uh, the radius and the, uh, the direction of the momentum would be perpendicular to each other. So uh, the cross product would be would equal, equivalently result into R into P uh, with some uh, direction. So uh, uh, R into P will be equal to N into H over 2 pi. Now we know from uh, de Broglie's hypothesis that the momentum and the wavelength of, a, of an electron are interrelated. The relation is given by the wavelength of, an of a massive particle is given by h over the momentum. So now we can make a substitution of the, Pla uh, the Planck's constant over here by lambda into the momentum. And then we get a very uh, unique, very interesting result. The result comes out, comes out this way. P R into P is equal to N lambda into times P over 2 pi. Here I've reduced from, uh, I've changed from reduced Planck's constant to the Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. Here I have sub substituted the Planck's constant by lambda times P and then, uh, I, so from the, from the Bohr's quantization condition, we have uh, arrived at this relation. Here we simply cancel out the momentum of the particle. And so this gives two pi into radius is equal to n times the wavelength of the electron. Okay, so this is a very profound implication. This in one way says that the electron has to have an integral multiple of uh, the wavelength of the of the uh, electron has to be an uh, the the multiple of an electron's wavelength should be equal to the circumference of the electron's revolution cir circuit so in way uh, you can see this see it this way the relation was 2 pi into radius would be equal to n times lambda, where the radius is the radius of uh, revolution, and uh, wavelength is, a, is the de Broglie wavelength of, a, of an electron. So now, uh, assuming, uh, pic picturing it in this way, that there's a nucleus in the center, the electron is revolving at a distance of r from here circularly. Now this is 
the condition says that the circumference of this should be equal to the n times the wavelength which means which has which implies that if the electrons wavelength if the electrons uh, wa wa the wave waves crest starts over here let's say then uh, the wavelength comes out and multiply uh, and since it's a multiple of since the multiple of uh, the wavelength has to be and the equal to the circumference of the uh, of the uh, circle there's a, there's a constructive interference between the le, uh, the wave that is coming back from the other side of the electron so uh, you can see this this way it comes out this way and then eventually it will have a constructive interference so uh, you can think of it this way that uh, uh, if if this n were equal to 1 let's say that means the num the circumference is exactly equal to the wavelength so the the length covered uh, overall uh, in the circumference is equal to the wavelength and so once after after one revolution the electron would have covered one exactly one wavelength num amount of distance so there would have been such a interference this being the crest over here this being the trough this being the crest this being the trough so this is one complete revolution similarly if if this were not true then we would have observed if we would have started from one point come around we would have reached with a uh, with a phase difference which uh, which would have led to a destructive interference amongst the two uh, waves the incoming the original going wave in, in the original wave that was leaving from here and the wave that was coming from the other side i i hope uh, that is clear uh, i can make another uh, illustration of this starting from here here, here, here. If we say one wavelength amount of length is covered in this much, let's say if say if we take two pi r is equal to four times of the four times the wavelength n is equal n being four, then this much this much circumference covers one wavelength. So like this, the remaining covers another wavelength amount of distance next one covers another wavelength amount of distance uh, and the fourth one again covers some the same amount uh, had this multiple been n by 2 or something there would have been an a destructive interference after coming back over here so in that case the electron would would not have been possible it would have not been stable at all so this is a very profound uh, implication that uh, the electron has to have a wavelength that is uh, that is somewhat related to the circum the circumference of the of the uh, of the radius at which it is it is rotating we can go to the next problem now so i'll give you a couple of minutes to uh, attempt this problem again the dispersion relation for a lattice wave propagating in one dimensional chain of atoms of mass m bound together by force constant beta is given by the following by the equation omega is given by omega naught times sine of k a by 2 where omega naught is e equal to the square root of 4 beta by m here a is the distance between atoms and beta is the uh, expression given show that in the long wavelength limit the medium is not dispersive and then find the phase and group velocities at k equals pi by a so the dispersion relation relation given here is this omega equals omega naught times sine of k a by over 2 where omega naught is given to be under root of 4 beta by m so uh, Okay, so the, in the long wavelength limit, when the wavelength is extremely long, let's say wavelength is tending to infinity, we could simply say that, uh, okay, so k is related to wavelength by this relation, as we know. 
in the long wavelength limit, k would be tending to zero. K would be a very small quantity. And so we can say that uh, the dispersion relation could be simply written as omega is equal to omega naught. We can make a sine sine of small angle approximation, which is sine of, uh, let's say, ka over 2 minus of ka over 2 the whole cube, 1 by uh, 3 factorial, plus higher order terms. In the small angle approximation, uh, we could say, we could simply say that small k uh, approximation, we could simply say that this, the higher order terms are negligible in com uh, as compared to the first, uh, first order term. So omega can simply be written as omega equals omega naught times k a over 2. It is approximation. It is an approximation. So now we have a simpler, a simpler dispersion relation for the system given. For this, uh, if we try to calculate the group and the phase velocities, the phase velocity is given by, as, you, as Professor Shiv Prasad must have covered in class, that the phase velocity is given by uh, phase, v, phase, v phase is equal to omega over k. And V group is given by del omega over del k. So in this case, the phase velocity comes out to be exactly equal to the group velocity. And both of them are equal to omega naught a over 2. So now this is a very uh, interesting re uh, res result that we have ob obtained. Here we are getting the phase velocity and the group velocity are equal. So this in turn implies that any disturbance that, has, that, that is created in the wave would be propagating with a constant speed and would not be varying over time or space. These velocities are, uh, uh, are dependent absolutely on constants, omega naught a and uh, omega naught and a. So we know that the wave and the wave propagates absolutely at a constant speed. Uh, this can also be seen as this thing. Any disturbance that is created on the wave, let's say this is the wave over here, the group velocity would be given this way. So uh, I'm making a picture of the, how the wave actually looks. The wave would actually be a product of uh, two factors, the, the, veloc the phase velocity factor and the group velocity factor. Together, both of them would uh, give us the total wave. The group velocity uh, would individually uh, give the bigger, the, uh, would, would be comparable to the wave packet that we think about in quantum mechanics, the wave packet of, an, of, an, uh, of a photon or any particle uh, is what the group is supposed to be, whereas the particle, whereas the uh, velocity of particle, the ve velocity of phase is actually the space, actual space uh, uh, perturbations or actual space uh, uh, oscillations and velocities, uh, so to say. So uh, this can be thought of as this, uh, the wave, the the velocity of group would be, uh, uh, the, the group, groups would be uh, as these, whereas the phases would be individual, individual particles in between, which would be oscillating with some, some frequency, uh, which, is, which, which is probably different from uh, the group velocity, group phase, group uh, frequency. But the velocities of both of them would be, to, uh, would, be, would be the same. All of these particles would be moving together. All of them would be moving together and these, uh, internal crests and troughs, these internal crests and troughs would be maintained when, uh, as, the, as time passes. So after some time, we can just uh, hope, that, uh, we can just expect these, the, the entire wave to be traveling as it is, the same picture and moving together along the time direction, time or space, uh, either of those. Okay, so 
second part asks us to find the group and phase velocities at uh, k equals uh, pi by a. So at uh, k equals pi by a, the, the original dispersion relation was firstly omega naught into sine of k a over 2. The phase, the uh, phase velocity would be omega over k, which would be equal to omega naught sine of k a over 2 over k. And uh, this would be the phase velocity. And the group velocity would be del omega over del k, which is equal to uh, omega naught into derivative of sine k a over 2 with, res with respect to k. That would be uh, a over 2 cos of k a over 2. Okay, so this, this, these evaluated at k equals pi by a. So at k equals pi by a, sine of k equals pi by a would be 1. Mm, when, okay, so this would be omega naught over k. And uh, the groove velocity, on the other hand, would be 0, because since cos of uh, pi by 2 would be 0. All right, so uh, like I said, in the earlier case, we, we got both the phase velocity and the groove velocity as a constant. The constant was equal to, if you don't remember, it was equal to uh, omega naught a over 2 in the previous case, vg and v, part, v phase in the earlier case. But now we are getting, uh, both of them are firstly une not equal in this, uh, in the, in, uh, if when, we not, we, when we don't do the approximation. And when we do a substitution of k equals pi by a, we get a difference in uh, both of them. So this also implies that one of the wave packet, the wave packet uh, does not, the wave packet does not move at all because the phase velocity, the groove velocity is given as zero. Whereas the phase velocity is non-zero, that means the internal waves the waves in between each each group would be moving and propagating through space and time. Whereas in the earlier case, we saw that both of them both of them moved at the same speed, and so the entire wave moved together in space. All right, I think we can go to the next problem now, uh, the third problem. I'll give you a few minutes minutes to uh, give it a thought. So the question was, find the group and phase velocities of the matter, wa uh, matter wave associated with a free particle under the assumption the frequency is defined using the kinetic energy or the total relativistic energy. So uh, we can keep the relativistic energy case uh, hold on for a time. Time being, uh, we have to find the phase and group velocities for uh, when the energy is related by the kinetic energy only of a particle. Uh, so the group and the phase velocities, uh, when the particle's energy is related by the, uh, by only its kinetic energy, the particle's energy. Uh, let's let's try to write the dispersion relation, firstly. Is that uh, the particle's energy E is given just by the uh, kinetic energy, which is equal to the momentum square over two times the mass. All right. The momentum uh, given by the de Broglie hypothesis, hypothesis is related to the uh, wavelength. The momentum is related to the wavelength by P is given by H over lambda where uh, lambda is the uh, particle's de Broglie wavelength. Uh, we can find the relation between P and the wave vector k through this, because uh, lambda is just equal to 2 pi over k. So P would be equal to h over hk over 2 pi. 
or simply h cross times k. So we've got a relation between, so if we, if we substitute p into the energies uh, expression, where E is equal to P square over 2M, we would get uh, a relation between the energy and H uh, and K. That will be H cross square K square over 2 times the mass. Now, we know that we can attribute this energy to the wave nature of the particle with a particular wavelength, the wavelength and frequency. The frequency of which would be given by the relation energy is equal to h, h cross times omega. So, or which is sub simply equal to h into nu. So the uh, energy would, be, so this uh, in turn reduces to omega is equal to h cross omega is equal to h cross squared k squared over 2m, which is equal to omega is equal to h cross k squared over 2 times the mass. Now, this is a simple relation uh, between omega and k, and we can just simply find the group and the phase velocities using this. The group velocity, as we did before, would be uh, given by the derivative of omega with respect to k. And uh, the phase velocity would be given by just by dividing omega by k. That will be h cross uh, k over 2m. and group velocity would be h cross k over m since the derivative would take out take out the two all right so this is a uh, this is one relation that we have found out using the uh, using the energy being related just by the kinetic energy over here and then in inputting the momentum as h cross into k and uh, the energy as h cross into omega we found out the uh, omega versus k relationship, and then we found out the phase and the group velocities. Now, if we take this, if we try to attempt the same problem using the relativistic uh, energies, we would get a slightly different, pro uh, different result. Let's try this out. The second part of this question says this. The try this, uh, then if the energy is related by the relativistic, total relativistic energy, then how does the phase, phase and the group velocity turn out? Uh, so the relativistic case. So uh, probably uh, you might be knowing from before, uh, although it, it has not been covered in class yet, but uh, the, in, the, in the relativistic case, the energy relation, e energy is given by the famous Einstein's equation, uh, E squared is equal to P squared C squared plus M naught squared C raised to four, where, where M naught is the rest mass of the particle and the momentum, P is the momentum of the particle C over here is just the speed of light, and this is the total energy. So it's not a, not a lin linear re relation anymore. It's a, the energy squared is related by uh, the momentum squared and the mass squared in some way. There's a, a, there's a restriction this way. In the, uh, the entire problem changes because of this relation. So now uh, going beyond, uh, uh, substituting, uh, substituting P is equal to H cross time K, we get energy is equal to, uh, we'll reduce the uh, square root sign. H cross square K square C squared plus M naught squared C raised to four. All right. Now we equate this to uh, h cross into omega and uh, solve it beyond. So uh, h cross into omega is equal to squared h cross squared k squared c squared plus m naught squared c raised to 4 raised to half. And now 
just finding the phase and the group velocities would be simple. Uh, we have a omega and k relationship. You can just divide omega by k and find the phase velocity, and uh, we can differentiate omega with respect to k and find the group velocity. So omega by k, which is equal to uh, the phase velocity, is equal to this this not so uh, good looking equi expression, some k relationship plus some constant, some other constant over k. And uh, the group velocity would be mm, the derivative of this with respect to k. So uh, that turns out to be, uh, so differentiating this with respect to k would give us one over, firstly, one over h cross from over here. And uh, so half of this, 2k into h cross square c squared over this, this entire bracket. This entire bracket comes over here uh, on differentiating. So again, uh, now we see the expression has changed entirely. Uh, it is dependent on uh, k over square root of k squared plus square root of some, something like k squared, some constants, c0 plus uh, some c1. And over here also c0 and some c1. Uh, these relationships aren't really aren't exactly as we found out in the previous case, which were just linear. The phase velocity and the group velocity were linear, re linearly re related to k earlier, but in this case we see there's a difference. So that's how uh, relativity changes the uh, the entire situation. The phase and the group velocities changes change entirely due to this. All right, I think we can go to the next problem. It's a very interesting problem. So I'll read out aloud the question once. A wave packet is constructed by superposing waves, their wavelengths varying continuously in the following way. Y of x comma t, which is the wave, it is given by an integral of a, a of k of an amplitude times cos of kx minus omega t times dk where k is the wave, uh, wave vector. Uh, and now uh, there are some conditions given on A. Uh, AK is just a constant between some, uh, a range of uh, k from k0 equals minus, uh, uh, from k equals minus k0, uh, k0 minus how, delta k by 2 to k0 plus delta k by 2. And, it's, uh, uh, and A is equal to 0 otherwise. Now we have, we have to sketch the uh, approximate y uh, the actual wave and estimate the de the f uh, uncertainty in the position that we'll obtain uh, from the particle from this wave given okay so we can continue with the problem now uh, i'll go about with this so we are g firstly we are given a of k is a constant a in the range of k between k0 minus delta k over 2 to k0 plus delta, delta k over 2 and uh, 0 otherwise. So uh, I'll just make a plot to keep this in mind. So if this is, uh, this is k versus uh, a of k. It would be as, it would be 0 all throughout and then there will be a box type relation and then zero again. So this is a constant over here, a is, a, a is a constant equals a naught and uh, the range is given by the condition given over here. This is k naught minus delta k over 2 and this is k naught plus delta k over 2. Okay, so now evaluating the uh, actual wave given uh, as the relation given over here. The, the displacements in, along the y direction are given as y of xk as the integral. 
Now we can reduce this integral by substituting the values of a in the ranges given. So a is equal to, so from the, re, from the range, uh, from, the re, uh, from the range 0 to k0 minus delta k over 2, a will be just equal to 0. So the integral would be 0 times cos of the cos of kx minus omega t times dk plus in the range of k0 minus delta k over 2 to k0 plus delta k over 2 it will be just a constant times cos of something times dk plus the third term would be exactly as this term except that the integral would be from k0 I'll just write it down the integral would be from k0 plus delta k over 2 till infinity and again the coefficient would be 0 times cos of something times dk. So again these two uh, integrals would, would be 0 uh, obviously because the coefficients are given as 0. We only have to evaluate this one integral over here. Uh, in the range from k equals minus uh, k naught minus delta k over 2 to k naught plus delta k over 2. So the, uh, the displacements y of x comma t would be equal to a times the integral of k naught minus delta k over 2 to k naught plus delta k over 2 of cos of kx minus omega t times dk. All right, so let's go, go ahead and uh, evaluate this integral. The integral of cos with uh, cos would be just sine, sine divided by the coefficients. So we can uh, write that down. Y of x comma t would be evaluated as a times some a times the integral would evaluate as a uh, sine of uh, kx minus omega t sine of kx minus omega t over x within the range of k being from k naught minus delta k over 2 to k naught plus delta k over 2. All right, so now substituting, uh, we make the substitutions and uh, do some simplifications. Uh, this would be, uh, we can just remove the x over here and uh, group it with uh, our a. And this would turn out to be sine of uh, k naught plus delta k over 2 times x minus omega t minus the whole thing subtracted by sine of, it's slightly tedious, k naught minus delta k over 2 times x minus omega t. Yeah. So now uh, we make some trigonometric simplifications. This is sine of a minus sine of b. We can write it as a uh, cos of a plus b by 2 uh, into sine of a minus b by 2. Uh, 2 times of sine of, uh, it will be 2 times cos of a plus b by 2 and sine of a, this minus this by 2. So the relation evalu uh, simplifies to 2 times a over x times cos of sum of these two divided by 2, which would be k naught uh, x minus omega t. This is a simpler relation. And multiplied by sine of sine of the difference of these two divided by 2. 
So uh, we can write it as this. Uh, delta k into x minus omega t. This would be divided by 2 and this would remain as it is. All right. So we have simplified the, our original integral from our original integral of y of x comma t equal to uh, integral of a k into cos of k x minus omega t. We have arrived at this relationship between uh, the, amp the wave displacements y of x comma t and, and these two trigonometric terms. Now, uh, getting back to the question, what are the question exact the question ask is that uh, sketch this. You know, uh, we'll do the sketching uh, in a while. Before that, we'll just uh, notice that one of these in the limit that k naught is uh, much greater than k uh, delta k. This one would have uh, this sine function would have a very slow uh, oscillation frequency. Since uh, delta k is a delta k is a very small quantity as compared to k naught, I'll just write it down. K naught is given if in the limit. K naught is much greater than delta k. The oscillations uh, with respect to sine uh, function, the sine function, would be much uh, slower since uh, much slower in, sp in space coordinate. And so uh, in, like we saw in the earlier problem, these could be say, said as the group velocity, group uh, frequency. Uh, this would correspond to the group frequency, whereas these would correspond to individual particles oscillating uh, within uh, each group. So uh, uh, you can see it this way. Since delta k is a, a small, smaller quantity, Let's say if this is this were the envelope, this were the uh, overall delta k factor uh, oscillation. This is the sine k sine delta k x uh, delta k times x over two oscillation. Then uh, within each within this this much of, of uh, length, there will be a large number of uh, uh, oscillations with of the uh, cost factor. So uh, I'll just write it down at this, as this. Uh, the, OK, so firstly, uh, if we say that x, at x equals 0, we can, we can firstly uh, ignore the omega t factor for a while and uh, discuss this uh, only at uh, a constant time, uh, time equals 0, t equals 0, let's say. So at t equals 0, the sine factor, sine of kx minus uh, delta k into x over 2 would be oscillating in this fashion, again uh, continuing. And at x equals 0, it would be 0. And at x equals, uh, x equals delta pi over 2 uh, delta k, it would again be 0. OK? Uh, so where, where we know delta k is a very small quantity, very, uh, very small quantity, hence this, is a very, this length is a very large quantity. But, but within the, this length, each of these uh, oscillations would happen. So uh, as for, a, for, a small, for any, any given x value, these would be oscillating since these are uh, relatively large, larger quantities. And we would observe oscillations like this as we had seen earlier in the previous problem. Again, this uh, highlights on the group and the phase. Uh, velocities. And now, so uh, on, the envelope would actually look like this. Uh, if we take it uh, ahead beyond, it would be, it would look something like this. Where uh, the number of oscillations within the, within each group would be different from uh, how many are there uh, which would be would be dependent entirely on the k naught and and delta k naught uh, how I have made right now. All right. So the problem also asks us to verify the uncertainty in the position given by the envelopes envelopes uh, uh, wavelength. So firstly, we notice that the envelope envelopes wavelength would be given by uh, when this factor sine of two uh, delta k x over two would be 
ch would change by 2 pi. So uh, that, would, that would make a, a delta, a, delta k into the wavelength, let's say x prime over 2 would equal to 2 pi. Uh, so uh, that will be equal to, the wavelength would be equal to x prime is equal to 4 pi over delta k. All right. So, uh, so cal to calculate the uh, uncertainty in delta x, delta x, the uncertainty in delta x has to be taken as uh, the difference between one cr one maxima and one minima uh, within the group group velocity group uh, wave. So that would correspond to a phase shift of just pi instead of pi by two, and so we'll get uh, delta x would be equal to. So this can be taken as the wavelength delta x would be equal to two pi over delta k. All right. So now we have found a relationship between uh, the delta x and the delta k. The relationship was uh, delta x is equal to two pi over delta k. Now, uh, we make some s simplifications. Now, taking uh, delta k to the other side, delta k times delta x would be equal to 2 pi. And noticing that uh, p is given by k times h cross. So multiplying both sides by h cross and uh, substituting, substituting k, uh, h cross into delta k as delta p. So I'll just write it down. Multiplying both by uh, h cross would give us uh, h cross delta k delta x is equal to 2 pi times h cross. All right. So now this can be written as uh, delta p since uh, h cross is just a constant. And so delta p would be uh, given by h cross times delta k. I'll just write it down. Delta P would be just uh, H cross times delta K. And so this is delta P times delta X is equal to two pi times H cross, which is equal to which. And now we have found out the uncertainty principle. We have obtained at the uncertainty principle through uh, just by assuming that the oscillations of a particle are given by some sine functions and uh, so this is a very profound result that we have obtained right now. All right, I think we can go, move on to the next problem. So the information given in the problem is that the average value of momentum px is zero, and uh, uh, the, uh, the momentum in x direction is given as zero. And so the uncertainty, the standard deviation in uh, the momentum is just given by the square root of uh, the square average value, the expectation value of px squared. Now we are uh, requested to obtain, firstly, the minimum kinetic energy that uh, the proton and electron would have uh, if they were uh, confined to confined to a, a nucleus of approximately uh, approximate diameter of 10 to the minus 14. And uh, we have to see that this argument g results in the electron not being, it, it, it turns out to be that this, these, this energy is very unphysical. The electron couldn't have, uh, cannot have this, amount, this much amount of energy uh, staying within the nucleus. So uh, I think we'll go about with the problem. Uh, so the delta, so we are given that delta problem five, the expectation value of uh, momentum or the average value is given as zero. And uh, the standard deviation in the momentum is given by square root of the average value of P of X times square, squared. Had this not been uh, zero, we would have had uh, another term over here written as uh, 
p x the average of p x the whole squared but since it's given away given zero we can just ignore this all right so uh, firstly uh, we are to eva evaluate the kinetic energy using uh, this so uh, the kinetic energy would be given by p squared over 2m so we are given that the electron or the proton are confined to a diameter of 10 to the minus 14 so we can say that delta x is equal to 10 to the minus 14 of meters all right using the uncertainty relation that delta x times delta p is equal to let's say anything uh, h cross or h bar it doesn't really matter uh, we'll just we'll just be working by with the uh, with the order of magnitudes uh, these this entire problem can be uh, just needs us to do an uh, order of magnitude analysis it doesn't need really to give a precise uh, answer so we can just take it as uh, h cross usually it's uh, the act, the exact relation would would be h cross over 2 but then uh, this is this would work absolutely uh, so delta p would be given by uh, h cross over delta x we make the substitution over here for the kinetic energy uh, of the nucleus in the of the particle in the nucleus and uh, it would be kinetic energy is equal to uh, the h cross squared over 2 times mass times delta x the whole squared all right so now keeping the mass as a variable so in the part in the question it is asked that uh, we can we have to solve this for electrons as well as protons we can keep we can substitute at the end of uh, each for uh, the electron and a proton separately and uh, see how the res results are uh, for now we'll just uh, make the substitution this is equal to uh, the h cross would be given by uh, 10 to the minus 34 the whole squared over 2 times the mass we can ignore the 2 also but okay let's just keep it over here uh, times delta x squared delta x squared would be minus 14 the whole squared all right so uh, this would turn out to be of the order 10 to the minus 40 over 2 times the mass if we uh, try to evaluate this in this is in joules so if we try to evaluate this convert this into um, electron volts we will have to multiply and divide by uh, electrons and uh, the net result would be uh, something like uh, okay divided by electrons so uh, it will be 10 to the minus 10 to the positive 119 electron volts uh, divided by 1.6 uh, uh, I'll just uh, give you a couple of minutes to attempt this I think I'm getting the numbers somewhere wrong I was hoping to get a positive uh, an extremely positive number Oh, okay. All right. All right. I think I've gotten it. So yeah, uh, this is the relation right now. Uh, it's uh, the kinetic energy is given by this. I've converted. So over, till over here, the kinetic energies were in joules. I'll just write it down joules. And over here, it's in electron volts. So I'll just copy the relation on a, in another sheet and explain. Kinetic energy is equal to. Uh, 10 to the minus 40 over 2 times the mass multiplied by 10 raised to 19 over 1 over 1.6 electron volts all right so simplifying this a little bit uh, gives 10 to the minus 21 uh, times some uh, we can ignore this 3.2 times the mass so now substituting for the mass of electron and proton separately for electron it would be 
uh, the mass of the electron is uh, around nine, 9 into 10 to the minus 31 in, uh, in SI units. Uh, so this would uh, this would be uh, uh, this would give us ten, uh, ten to the minus twenty one over some constant. Uh, some this okay. We can ignore the uh, constants and write it this way: nine into ten to the minus thirty one. And similarly, this is for electron. Okay, electron. And similarly for the proton. Uh, the same analysis would give us this. Ke would be equal to 10 to the minus 21 over 3.2 into the mass, which is equal to 10 to the minus minus 27 in this case. Into some into some uh, constant, we can ignore that. It is an approximation. So uh, this gives us. Uh, so all right, uh, both of them are in electron volts. This one gives us. A total of this is approximately 10 to the 10 in order, whereas this one is over here of the order of 10 to the 6. So kinetic energy of an electron is about, about this much, and of, of a proton is about 10 to the 6, whereas of an electron is of the order of 10 to the 10 electron volts, which is which can be said as a, a almost. A, giga electron volts. This is almost like uh, 10 giga electron volts. This is extremely large. Uh, a normal electrons, the electrons rest mass is given by is about 0.5 mega electron volts. Whereas this is in giga, giga electron volts. This is extremely large and uh, unphysical for an electron to have. Whereas uh, for a proton, on the other hand, the same result gives us uh, something like 10 to, the, uh, 10 to the 10 electron volts. Which is equal to a mega electron volt, uh, which is very physical, uh, and, and and a proton's okay. Uh, I'll write this down. Mass of an electron. A, pro, a proton's mass is given uh, is about 900 or 930 uh, mega electron volts. So this is very physical as compared to the uh, the kinetic energy of a, of the proton that we have observed is very physical. It makes a lot of sense for a proton to have such a, a, a kinetic energy, and for an electron to not have such a kinetic energy, uh, since the electron cannot be restricted in such a small area. Also, another analysis of the momentum uh, we could do uh, using the uncertainty uh, relation and the delta x we were given. The delta x that was given was 10 to the minus 14. Since I'm running short of time, I'll just uh, I'll do a small analysis of uh, the momentum of the uh, of the particles of each of the particles in within that nucleus. Given this uh, uh, del delta x, we can find the delta v, the the uncertainty in the velocity would be given by h by uh, h or h cross by uh, delta x into m, the mass. All right. So this would be of the order of 10 to the minus 34 over delta x is given as uh, 10 to the minus 14. So we can uh, simply write this as, uh, okay, right, we'll write it down as 10 to the minus 14. And the mass would be 10 to the minus, uh, for, for an electron it would be 31, and uh, for a proton it would be minus 27. So if we reduce this, for an electron we get delta v for an electron would be about 10 to the 11 if we reduce this to uh, this. And sa the same thing for a proton would be around 10 to the 7 since this turns to 10 to the minus 27. Uh, the entire thing, uh, the entire relation reduces to 10 to the 7. Now from relativity in hindsight we know that uh, the uh, speed of an electron, uh, speed of any particle cannot be more than the speed of light. Over here, we are observing that the speed of uh, electrons is coming, the, the uncertainty in the, in, in the electron's velocity, or in some way, the electron's speed is coming to be uh, more than the speed of light, which is entirely uh, unphysical. Hence, we can uh, easily say that the electron is, uh, cannot be bound within this much 
delta x, which is to say the it cannot have been bound within a nucleus. Uh, so moving on, uh, there's a there are two other parts to this problem. So the next part is pretty simple. Uh, we can go ahead. The next part is just says that uh, in a square well potential. Okay, so we have to find the ground state energy of a particle uh, uh, in an infinite square well potential. Again, this is an approximate problem. We are not entire, uh, We are not dealing with exact values. The delta x over here can be taken simply as delta x is equal to, for an infinite potential, uh, delta x can simply be taken as uh, the length of the potential itself. Uh, again, so now uh, the the energy, ground state energy delta k, the, the ground state energy or the energy, so to say, would be uh, p squared over 2m, which would be, again, uh, we can, substitute P as uh, H cross over L. Delta P is equal to H cross over delta X, which is equal to delta H cross over the length. So now we get H cross squared over 2M L squared. Uh, if, uh, I'm, pre I'm sure that uh, you have uh, already done this problem uh, of uh, of a particle in a, uh, in, a, in, infin in an infinite well. Now we are seeing that uh, the relation over here is gives that we are we have obtained is not exactly in, not entirely equal to what we have expected. We would have expected the actual uh, answer would have been pi times uh, h cross squared over two m l squared for a ground state for the ground state energy. Whereas uh, we are observe we have calculated it as uh, h cross squared over two m l squared. Now. Uh, so this is to say uh, we are we are dealing with just uh, approximations. We have taken delta x as just equal to L. Had uh, more information information been given about the nature of uncertainty in the position, we would have had a better estimation of what the energy would have been, and hence uh, we could have ob actually uh, had op obtained the uh, correct relation of pi squared h cross squared over two m l squared. All right, so. Uh, we can go to the next problem, the next part, but uh, next part is next part is slightly simple, so uh, I would leave that for uh, you people to uh, to attempt that. Since we're running running out of time, we'll attempt the sixth problem now. So I'll uh, simply explain the problem, what the problem states. The problem states that uh, in in actual physical atoms. Uh, the excited atoms uh, usually the electrons in a higher state, not their ground state. They usually emit some photons and come back to the ground state. Now we are given over here that uh, the lifetime of at which for which the electron stays in the higher state is of the uh, is of around 10 to the minus 8 seconds. Now we are expected to find the uncertainty in the uh, energy uh, uh, in the B part and the uncertainty in the frequency using this information. The information given is again the, uh, that the, life, uh, the lifetime of an electron at a highest energy state is equal to 10 to the minus eight seconds. So delta T is given to be of 10 to the minus eight seconds. All right, we know the uncertainty principle for relating the uncertainty in energy or, and the in, uh, uncertainty in the time as uh, delta E times delta T would be equal to uh, H cross. Simply to say H cross, uh, I we'll ignore any factors to or uh, anything. So, uh, so the second part just simply uh, tells us to evaluate this value of uncertainty in the energy uh, that that can be simply done by making the substitutions. In the first part, rather we are asked to find the frequency, the, the uncertainty in the frequency. So we'll evaluate, we'll go ahead and evaluate that. That's uh, uh, the uncertainty in the energy would be uh, the uncertainty H cross in H into the uncertainty in the frequency times the delta T would be equal to H cross. Now, uh, Canceling the H cross and H, uh, 
we would get delta nu delta t is equal to 1 over 2 pi. Uh, so, delta nu is simply equal to 1 over 2, 2 pi times delta t. This is equal to this is equal to 10 to the 8 over 2 pi. So, we can just simply say that it is around 10 to the 7 sorry this is 10 to the 7 hertz. The uncertainty in the frequency is coming out to be 10 to the 7 hertz. Now, uh, so uh, this is the uncertainty we have observed. Uh, now, we are asked to find out the uncertainty, the fractional uncertainty, the uh, delta nu by nu for the radiation of a wavelength given as uh, 5000 angstroms. So, the, so, we are supposed to find delta nu over nu given lambda is equal to 5000 angstroms. Now, we can simply we can simply do the calculations and find the frequency. Frequency would be equal to uh, C over the lambda which would turn out to be 3 over 5 times 10 to the my 10 to the 8 plus uh, 10 to the minus 7. So, that will be 10 to the 15. So, this is the frequency of light. And uh, so, the fractional uh, fractional uncertainty in the particles uh, frequency would be simply 10 to the minus 10 to the 7 over uh, this factor over here 10 to the 15. We can ignore the 3 by 5. So, delta nu over nu is given by this. So, we see that it is a very small factor, it is a of the order of 10 to the minus 8 uh, hertz, it is of the order of 10 to the minus 8. Uh, so, so, we can simply say that uh, the, uh, so uh, when we observe the spectrum of uh, an electron excited, uh, of an electron de exciting from an excited state. Uh, we can simply say that the electron, uh, the the, the uncertainty in the frequency uh, is is very less. But still, if we if we resolve the frequency to uh, of the order of ten to the eight, then we could see the uncertainty. We could see a width within the uh, the uh, the spectrum power spectrum observed over there. All right, so I think this is the last problem now. Uh, we can go to some questions. If anyone has doubts, questions any, regarding anything uh, in quantum mechanics. Center 1, 2, 5, 6, go ahead for your question. How group of waves are generated when single particle is under motion? Okay, uh, your question is how a group is formed when uh, we are dealing only with a single particle, uh, so to say, right? Yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah. All right. So, uh, it is an interesting question. So, firstly, uh, uh, so the whole, uh, the entire discussion about, about quantum mechanics relies on the fact that uh, a particle is not just one particle, but there is one particle. Uh, we can just, we can say that it is a particle associated with a wave with it. All right. So, there is a wave. Uh, so, to say for uh, each particle, if there is an interference of one particle with another particle, we can say that the, there is a interference of two waves and then there is a, there's a, there's this difference that comes in the phase and the group velocities. So, you are right, uh, we are not deal, uh, the phase and the group velocities does not come due to one particle, but the, due to the interference of multiple particles, let us say two particles and then there is a, so that will lead to some differences in the frequencies and which would be, which would give us the uh, a difference in the phase and the group velocities. Another question is there, sir. Yeah. Uh, then, according you. to deep wavelength hypothesis, wavelength lambda is equal to H P P. Yeah. Where P stands for m in the V. Uh, yeah. Why uh, didn't we use group uh, group velocity in that occasion? Okay. So, all right. So, uh, I think uh, Professor Shiv Prasad could answer this uh, much better. I'll give it an attempt. Uh, this okay. So the De Broglie's hypothesis is about one particle. Uh, we, uh, when De Broglie says that lambda is equal to h by the momentum, 
uh, he uh, it is set only for one particle. The f uh, so uh, let's say one electron over there. So uh, we can when we make a substitution to find the lambda, it's for one particle. Now the group and the phase velocities that you said are for multiple. Uh, like I said, for when two particles interfere, there's a group, there's a phase and a group velocity. So hence there's a difference. The uh, the de Broglie's hypothesis does not apply to that. Uh, 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 an interfered particle. If had we uh, a better understanding of how the interfered particle can be thought of as one particle together, then we would have said uh, one part as one particle alone. Then we could have said that uh, we could have applied the de Broglie's hypothesis to find one wavelength. But uh, since that is not true, and uh, we and we uh, and I'm pretty sure that we wouldn't be uh, we wouldn't be finding that because. Uh, Okay, so firstly, uh, because uh, we, uh, as we saw, the wave, the wave changes, the wave's uh, amplitude firstly changes, and its uh, internal frequencies also, internal wave also changes. So there's a difference. The this is not exactly a normal wave, which uh, uh, which was assumed in the de Broglie's hypothesis. So uh, there's a difference. I think uh, Professor Shiv Prasad could uh, explain this much better. Diagram, the wave, what you have drawn, it looks yeah. like uh, coming from a single particle. That's, I have an elementary doubt in that actually. Uh, 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 in the wave packet that I made uh, to uh, a crest and a trough and uh, uh, within, within there, are electro, uh, there are oscillations that are increasing and then decreasing. Are you talking about yes, that? Yes, yes, that, that is my doubt. Yeah, so uh, that is about, uh, that is when more than one particle, when more than one particles are there together. So uh, again, again, uh, the, the K relationship that we saw, so in problem number four, we saw that the uh, displacements were given as an integral over K, all right? So that means uh, the, uh, not only one K values are available, there are multiple K values available for, uh, in, the, in the analysis. Whereas, uh, uh, according to de Broglie's hypothesis, there will be only one part, one k value. All right. So uh, there's a difference. So th over here, there are multiple particles, whereas in the de Broglie's hypothesis deals with only with one particle, any one particle. Center one one seven six. Go ahead. From Karnataka. Uh, sir, in the second problem. Uh, okay. While solving the second problem. We got Vg is equal to zero. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that means uh, particle will be at rest. Yes. Yes. Uh, I think that is a contradict result. I think. Uh, okay. I'll, let's just look at the problem. So uh, the dispersion relation was relation was given as a omega over as some uh, sine function. So uh, uh, and uh, we were we found out uh, the phase and the group velocities for k equals pi by a. So yeah, I think it, it is possible uh, that uh, for this one k value, k equals pi by a, the phase the group velocity comes out to be zero. But it, in general, it, that need not be the case. Uh, so I would say that uh, the particle as such is not moving, but. Uh, uh, in in other cases of k values, there, the particle would be moving, and uh, we would get a, get a non-zero uh, group velocity. And in the same problem, yeah, in the next part, yeah. we got uh, v phase greater than v g. Is that possible, sir? Yeah. Uh, v phase is equal to omega by k. Yeah. Will be h cross k divided by two m. Yeah. And v g is yeah. equal to d, d yeah, omega divided by d k is h cross k divided by m. M. Yeah. So that is. Uh, so yeah, uh, VG is twice the V phase. Yes, uh, that's uh, correct. Uh, there's a there's a difference between the two. Uh, so the phase velocity was given as uh, h cross k by two m, and the group velocity was given as h cross k by m. So physically, we could think of this at, uh, as this: the the group as such is moving with a s slower rate, but the oscillations within are moving much faster. So uh, let's say initially, the, if, when the group is over here, uh, the oscillations were uh, within them. But uh, as soon as, uh, as time passes, the oscillations move move beyond and they move into the next next group. So the oscillations 
keep shifting from one group to the next one uh, and uh, travel beyond. That's how it is. Next. Uh, one, three, five, go ahead. From Tamil Nadu. The first problem which we have solved, uh, yes. that circumference of a circle yes. is equal to an integral multiple of wavelength. Yes. Right? Yes. Which is applicable only for the hydrogen atom or any other atoms? Uh, this would apply to any atom which has only one electron. So, in, in, the phys in physics we call it like, uh, as hydrogen-like atoms. These would be atoms that have only one electron. We could say it, it is a helium plus ion or a lithium uh, two plus ion. So uh, any atom that would have only one electron. So firstly, uh, the, de Bro the Bohr's, Bohr's uh, model, Bohr model applies only to atoms that are hydrogen-like, which have basic, which basically means which has only one electron associated to the nucleus. So there's one nucleus which could have uh, uh, any number of protons or neutrons, but there's, there should be only one electron associated with it. So it could be lithium two plus ion or a helium plus ion or anything beyond that, or a hydrogen ion, uh, atom. So uh, this relation, re this result that we obtained is uh, true for uh, all of them. The phase velocity of a wave is yeah. greater than the velocity of light. Then what about the physical nature of the de Broglie wave? The phase velocity of a particle of the uh, particle is greater than the uh, velocity, if it turns out to be greater than velocity of light, you're asking what would be the nature of De Broly, uh, I mean, how would De Broly's, okay, so like I said earlier, phase and the group velocities come, as, come into the picture when we are talking about multiple particles interacting together. All right, so uh, in that case, again, uh, applying the De Broly's hypothesis does not make sense because uh, uh, that, that applies only to a single particle case. And anyways, uh, if the phase velocities come out to be larger, uh, than speed of light, then uh, that's not entirely a problem because those aren't physical matter moving with the speed of uh, uh, something greater than light. Those actual physical particles are only the groups that are formed. The groups are the actual physical particles that are moving. That turns out to be larger than the speed of light, then that is, an, that is a problem. Not, uh, not if the, uh, in the phase velocity comes out to be larger than the, problem, that larger than the speed of light. Uh, if you take the de Broglie relation, lambda is equal to h by p. Yeah. For a particle of having a mass m moving yes. with certain velocity, then yes. it will have only a unique momentum. Yes. Then the corresponding wavelength also should be unique. Can we say that the de Broglie wave is monochromatic? Uh, no, uh, because uh, an assumption that you made was the momentum is unique. So like, like we know, uh, there's an uncertainty in the momentum and the position of a particle. If we, uh, okay, let's take an example. Uh, if we take the electron's uh, wavelength to be a constant, uh, a particle's wavelength to be a constant, one value, that would mean the particle has one momentum, uh, or, and we can, uh, we can picture it as a wave moving in, in free space, uh, a continuous wave moving from, from minus infinity to plus infinity, moving in free space. This would be of one wavelength, and uh, the de Broglie's hypothesis would give us one momentum associated with it. But then with this, uh, with this condition, we have lost the uncertainty, the certainty in uh, uh, the, position of the position of the particle. So uh, when, we, when we say that the particle uh, is a wave, uh, when we take a wave which is, uh, which is uh, spread it out around the whole space, uh, we are saying that the uncertainty in uh, the position is infinite. Like we can find the electron from minus infinity to plus infinity anywhere. But then, uh, so, uh, so we have lost the uncertainty. Uh, uh, the, the, the uncertainty principle has shown, uh, shown its uh, role over there. Now, if, uh, if, you, if we make the particle a little bit constricted to some small range of space. And, yes. the, and it is finite extent. Yes. It is not from minus infinity to plus, plus infinity. The wave packet is of finite size. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So uh, if we make it a finite sized particle, that's what I was, I was about to say, that if we make it a finite size particle, we would have to include more terms in the, uh, in the wavelength uh, uh, condition. So, uh, so uh, okay, 
we, if we want to distribute, if, to, if we want to find the Fourier transform of, or, or, the, or the spectrum of, uh, or the uh, dispersion relation for this particle, which is localized with respect to the frequencies, it would, be, it would have a lot of terms, not just one term, like, uh, like in the previous case. So then again, uh, the uncertainty has shown its role and uh, now we don't have a distinct, we don't have a distinct wavelength associated with it. Uh, this, this, and, and the momentum. So again, this is interrelated, as you may see. Like the, you, see you see the uncertainty in the wavelength, uh, the, uh, uh, which is somehow related to, to the momentum by the de Broglie's hypothesis. And we know that the momentum, uh, and we see that the, there's an uncertainty in the momentum because there's an uncertainty in the lambda, in the wavelength. So uh, that gives us uh, uh, the uncertainty in uh, principle back again. The uncertainty in the pro, uh, x in the, and the multiplied by uncertainty in the momentum is a constant. Is greater than, greater than a constant at any time. In the fifth problem you solved today, you proved that the delta v in the order of 10 power 11 and yes. delta vp is in the order of 10 power 7. And yes. based on that, how can we say that um, electron could not exist within the nucleus. Can you yes. comment on this? Yeah, so uh, as I said then, the so de we said we found delta p, delta vp to be of the order of 10 to the 11 and uh, the other one was uh, for, so the uncertainty in the electron's velocity was of the order of speed, more than speed of light and that of uh, the proton was less than speed of light. Now, in some way, uh, the uncertainty of, the velo of a particle gives us, it, it reflects about the particle's actual velocity. Uh, so, once we are saying that uh, the uncertainty is greater than C, then we, we can clearly say that this is not, uh, this is unphysical. Relativity implies that uh, this, uh, the absolute speed of, speed of any uh, particle could be uh, equal to the speed of light. So as soon as in any argument, if we see something which is ex something exceeding the speed of light, we simply say that that's unphysical, that's, unpo that's impossible. So, uh, thank you, sir. yeah. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, it was uh, interesting uh, solving these problems today with you. Thank you and bye-bye.